So we have a new version of the DJI Fly app. This is 1.12.8 and essentially it comes with some really, really nice features. And these features are quite interesting because I think it's part of my own self growth or maturity because they've actually revised something that I didn't actually really care much um, for before. Whereas now I think it's a really good idea. What I'm going to do is show you exactly what that is, what I have found to be new in this DJI Fly App version. And then I'm going to go for a short test flight with the DJI Mini 4 Pro just to make sure everything is working as it should. And overall, just give my general thoughts on this update during the course of the video. Now the intro is all done. Let's get into it. So before where we used to have all of this blank space on the left hand side, now we have got three new sections. We have got this before you fly section, we have got a new revised quick transfer section, and then of course we have got this new version here where it says service. We've also got a new prompt uh, to the academy where we can watch tutorials and learn how to use the aircraft. All of this is absolutely fantastic and geared more towards the beginner drone flyer, especially if you are new to DJI drones. So what we're going to do is just explore the before you fly uh, first and this is mainly the feature that I said that I didn't really care for much before because it incorporates flight spots now if you don't know what they are basically it was DJI's little database basically showing uh, drone flyers spots where you may potentially want to uh, fly your drone any sort of landmarks architecture something of interest um, but what this has done is revise that whole section and depending on the country that you are in again this makes uh, the biggest difference and this is what many experienced drone flyers have been crying out for because what it now does is depending on the country with which you are flying for example of course I am here in the UK so this will tell me I need an operator ID not only do I need an operator ID but it tells you uh, pretty much where I can fly depending on the model with which I am flying and of course what restrictions might be in place and I thoroughly really like that us drone flyers have been mentioning for such a long time that beginners to the hobby have no general idea um, that basically there might be some restrictions in place or any idea that they may need an operator ID or anything of the sort whereas now this prompt is built into the DJI Fly app telling you depending on the country what you should require to fly where you want to fly not only that they make it so simple because if I click on the link right here it takes me to the UK CAA website where I can go and register and get my operator ID or my flyer ID depending on the uh, weight of the drone I'm wanting to fly and I think this is just I know I'm full of superlatives for this but I really really like this so say for example I want to fly in this area I can see that a flight spot has been added under architecture and of course a church so if I'm new to an area I can basically search these flight spots and go oh somebody else has posted a flight spot there they think uh, there's an so, uh, an attraction something that I might want to uh, video or photograph let's go check it out so if I click on this uh, flight spot that has been created by somebody else you can see exactly who has created it and this is a really nice photo of Beverly Minster now obviously I'm going to show you Beverly Minster a little bit later on but the point is if I was brand new to the area and just looking around for places to uh, film or fly or generally areas of interest now I didn't really care for this previously but I really do like this feature now Whereas, of course, if you do discover a really nice flying spot, you can, of course, go into the DJI Fly app, into this section right here, and add it yourself, add your own photos, and create your own flight spot for others to be able to find of interest. Overall, absolutely a big plus on that one, um, and I think that's a great new feature. Now it has to be said that the fly spots and restrictions within the DJI Fly app are most certainly not comprehensive so it was always a good idea to download a third party app such as Drone Assist to be able to see everything in real time because basically um, any no times or anything like that that are you know, uh, short time period will be updated and live on apps such as this so you can see in real time where the real restrictions are because it may well be that looking at the DJI flight spots you're absolutely fine whereas it comes to using an app such as drone assist there is some sort of restrictions going on so please always check uh, additionally to what's in the DJI fly app to make sure you are flying legally
The second feature is, of course, this new service selection. Now, whereas before, obviously, if you wanted to put a service request in, it meant obviously messing about, going to the DJI website, um, or if you wanted to check the status of a repair or any support, basically anything like this, now, not any longer. Now you can do it within this section of the DJI Fly app, making access to the whole service procedure. If you do have a problem with your drone, or as you can see, a flyaway section, if you have lost it, basically, Basically, it just makes things so much easier for you, the end user. If I just look at some, you know, ongoing repairs, you can see a couple uh, of previous repairs I've had with DJI. First of all, was my Mavic Air when I bought a Mavic Air on eBay, and it just did not work whatsoever. Okay, and I was lucky enough to be able to send it all the way off to DJI. And if you do want to watch this video, I will leave a link at the end of this one because it was really cool buying a sight unseen drone off eBay and just seeing if I could get it working and going through the entire process really good fun or of course you know my dji air 2s where i constantly kept uh, losing signal okay and it just started landing on its own uh, when it basically nearly uh, crashed itself due to this completely unprompted incredible but dji took it back for repair so again you can see all of this information now the third part is of course this new quick transfer feature. Now quick transfer has already been on the DJI drones within the DJI Fly app and coincidentally I've recently made a video on how to use this uh, quick transfer feature but with this DJI Fly app essentially all they've done is put the little icon uh, right on the home screen just to make it that little bit more accessible. Now thankfully the video I've already made on this quick transfer feature isn't redundant because whilst DJI have added this shortcut to the home screen the process is essentially the same so rather than explaining it all in this video if you want to go and watch uh, that one i will again leave it a link at the end of this one so you can easily go check that out so with those three features now covered, it's time to take a look within the menus for the DJI Mini 4 Pro just to see if there is anything new. Uh, looking through all the menus, sub-menus, uh, checking everything, I didn't particularly notice anything new. Of course, I can always miss things, um, so if you have spotted something I haven't, do let me know in the comment section below. Um, I have been through the menu system with the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the Mini 3 Pro, and the trusty DJI Mini 2 just to check it, um, and again, no particular the new features but of course DJI haven't promised any. Now whilst there is no particular new features for the drones themselves there is a new feature uh, for the display for the DJI Fly app because you now have the ability to increase the text size just to make it that little bit more readable okay if you are struggling with the smaller font size which is part of the DJI Fly app normally and again this will pop up so you can adjust that when you first open the app after the update however if you're not quite sure whether you want to have it on or not or want to decide at a later date all you need to do is pop into the menu click the three dots and of course under the control tab you can see right there we can toggle that on or off again that's quite a nice feature i find will be helpful for many of you now, of course, no DJI Fly app update video would be complete without a flight test. So here I am out with the DJI Mini 4 Pro. And even for a drone such as this that performs absolutely fantastic in the wind, it is fair to say it is absolutely blowing like hell. And you're going to see a little bit later on that even a drone such as this one can struggle in the wind. So first of all, all we're going to do is again just take off and fly over this residential area. We're not going to go far. We're going to be mindful of the fact that we do have this pretty strong wind it is gusting around 45 to 50 miles an hour but of course you know i am flying into the wind as you can see by looking uh how slow our speed is of course and i'm coming back with the wind behind me so that's always the best thing to do always fly into the wind and fly back with the wind behind you just to avoid getting into any uh, tricky situations and of course preventing a potential flyaway now, just to show how strong this wind is, um, you can see a really painful attempt at me trying to take a top-down shot of this little barge um, on Beverly Beck. Essentially, the situation is it took me absolutely forever because what I found, and I've never noticed this before, that whilst the DJI Mini 4 Pro is absolutely fantastic um, in the wind, 
when I was putting the drone sideways onto the wind, even though I was pushing that full stick uh, to the left to try and get back over the barge when I'm con trying to complete this top down shot, um, essentially the drone was just still getting pushed. Now, I've never really experienced this before, even switching to sport mode, um, when I'm trying to fly sideways, it just wasn't having any of it. Now, keen viewers or experienced drone flyers of you may know that there is a bit of an issue uh, when you've got your camera at 90 degrees down okay it basically does it at really slow speed but even raising that gimbal so the camera wasn't all the way down and trying to fly to the side again it just wasn't having it i had to fly diagonally just to get back to where i wanted to be so of course we did eventually get the shot but just something for you to be aware of nothing i particularly noticed before on the mini 4 pro but certainly something that you will also see a little bit later on in the video. So continuing on the flight then after uh, that painful attempt at getting that top down shot, what I'm going to do is just attempt a quick shot uh, just to make sure the drone is selecting everything as it should. You may well think that this is completely unnecessary, but as I mentioned in a previous video, the reason I like to test this is because not too far in the past, uh, there was an issue with the DJI Fly app where it's if you tried to select an object using a quick shot, what it would actually do is crash the app, leaving you unable to see absolutely anything and having to restart it or it just would not select whatsoever until DJI eventually fixed it. So I've made doing a quick shot part of my routine, and as you can see, uh, it's performed it absolutely fine. So just to complete the test, I always like to finish with a return to home test, just to make sure, again, it's going to do exactly as expected. Now, in this particular wind, really, I should have kept it at a slightly lower altitude. Okay, we don't really want to be flying up all the way to the altitude that I've got set in my DJI Fly app in these winds. But on this occasion, it is actually okay, because as I mentioned previously, the wind is behind us coming home, so the drone shouldn't struggle that much. And as you can see, the drone is going to get all the way home however interestingly um just like happened earlier as the drone rotated or yawed if you wish uh, to actually face the same way with which it took off it then became sideways onto the wind and as you can see it completely got blown um quite some distance away from where it should have been so for me again as i've always advocated this on my channel once the drone has got you um basically back to the home point or above the home point i always like to cancel the return to home and this is most certainly a time for manual intervention as you can see leaving it in its automatic mode the drone was getting blown effectively away but cancelling that and taking manual control we can land that drone safely using manual flying so there we go that is all the new features on the dji fly app we've done a flight test and once again when it comes to my opinions I don't really have a bad word to say about this. I really like the new flight spots feature, really like the fact that it tells beginners or of course even advanced drone flyers uh, what qualifications and what requirements are required uh, to be able to fly in the area with which you've selected. It shows you any potential landmarks that much easier rather than going into the flight spot section. It just seems a bit more intuitive. We've got a great new feature where of course you can access all the service menus so you can arrange your repair tracker repair um, all sorts of stuff and then of course we've got that new quick access feature for the quick transfer so overall I think this is a really positive update um, and see no reason why you wouldn't install this so with that all being tested and reviewed please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of course I'm always happy to hear what you have to say if you found this video useful as always please do give it a big thumbs up the reason is it tells the YouTube algorithm more people just like you might want to watch what you've just seen subscribe if you're awesome for more drone related content just like this and until next time see you again soon